Welcome to Alta Monem. The Medang Provincial Council of Women have raised alarm on an increase in the number of rapes and incest cases involving children between the ages of 5 and 8 years old. This comes amidst the economic boom within the province that has seen an influx of people coming into Medang town. The Medang police recently opened a new family and sexual violence office to deal with each backlog of sexual related offense cases in the province. Bethany Harman with this report. The Medang province has seen an influx of the number of people moving into its major town. By the end of last year, Medang town's population had reached an estimated 500,000 numbers close to that of Lay City and Mount Hagen. That Medang and all its institutions are not ready for the influx of, of uh, people and the experiences they come with. It has been attributed to the recent economic boom in mining and fisheries in the province. Yes. Medang is one of the countries with a mining boom. It's already making an impact here in Medang. People are already migrating from all over, mainly the highlands. They're already down here in Medang, and we're already having a lot of problems. And we are opening up another highway with uh, uh, highlands, uh, which is the Juwaka province, so that people will move freely from uh, Juwaka, from Western Islands, and from Southern Islands into Medang. So you can see the influx of people coming into Medang, and people will come when people come in in numbers, there will definitely be social problems associated. We've seen cases like the incest cases coming to us, the rape cases that are coming to us, and we see a lot of breakdown in marriages. Mary Kaman, the team leader from the Medang Provincial Women's Council, has been working as a gender-based violence advocate for over 10 years. And we've uh, concentrated our program on GBB, concentrated on two districts, um, as you know, Medang, Medang has six districts. We only can reach out to two districts, and they are Bogia districts and um, Rikos district. We've seen 200 cases in a month. 200 cases in a month, yes. We see 200 cases in a month. But I'd just like to say that we, that's all cases, like uh, people who are coming for marriage breakdown. Some of them are here because, as I said, they need trauma counseling. They just need mediation. We do a lot of mediation here. And because we, the court now are saying that they will not see small cases. So court is also referring the cases to us. According to her records of reported cases, the first six month statistics is over 2,000 and growing. On average, Mary counsels about eight victims per day, often children who have been raped. There have been an increasing number of cases where husbands are raping their wife, but it has been a struggle to prosecute offenders. You know, we put them up in our homes to assist them. And you know what it is like when we have family living with us and then you have the, the boyfriends or the other partners who's coming and looking for them. So we're having all these kinds of problems. But I'm glad that the police have opened up the, uh, the family support unit for us to work with this. Uh, so far on record, we have received about 13 complaints, uh, three of which have gone before the court for interim protection orders to be issued. Uh, they've made two arrests and the others, they went through uh, mediation. So as Chief Superintendent see, Sylvester Kalau, the provincial police commander, says the Medang police have opened a new family sexual violence office to combat the problem. Uh, we've started the family and sexual violence unit for Medang. Uh, I've issued instructions uh, last month and the appointment, with the appointment of three staff to be engaged as uh, family and sexual violence uh, officers who will be dealing with these matters. The office comes after mounting pressure from church groups and NGOs to prosecute those offenders. The Medang police are understaffed and under-resourced and the demand outweighs the support that they have. Medang Police will have three officers working in the new office to curb the problem. I think I believe all that sexual offense squad office is staff, so they will work in partner with the Family and Sexual Violence Unit. And the major challenge is for the police to plan ahead so that we have uh, police 
uh, barracks and a station somewhere along uh, the highway, which is more strategic, so that it can provide policing service to the highway as well. Chief and Superintendent Kalaut expects that the number of cases will increase. Rapes and other sexual violence are social red tapes of recent economic booms. Economic boom that is fueled by foreign investment that promised jobs for Papua New Guineans in urban areas. An alternative route has also been built to connect three provinces of the highlands and more people are migrating. People are already coming into Medang, seeking jobs in unsustainable industries and work will become scarce. Is, uh, the Medang provincial government has, uh, has been assisting police to addressing the law and order issues here in Medang, but we've seen that it is a much, much bigger problem than, than what we thought it was. And then we ran into another problem and that was uh, with the appointment of a permanent administrator, provincial administrator. Now that we Medang have Governor Jim Carr says the provincial uh, government all I, all I has plans set to deal with the problems, but he admits that the province isn't ready to deal with multiple social disorders. And uh, plan a, a, a strategy, uh, as I said, using Calibre in 2020 and then, and then other initiatives with partners, with partners, development partners, and uh, maybe uh, donor agencies. Teenage prostitution, extramarital affairs, domestic violence, rape and divorces have increased and are expected to grow. Authorities will struggle to contain these problems. About 200 kilometers from Madang is Lei, PNG's industrial hub. Cases of sexual-related offences are no different to that of Medang province. The Lay Sexual Offence Unit has been struggling to attend to at least eight cases of sexual-related offences each day. While the officers are making sure that each case makes it into the courtroom, they are also taking heed of much bigger problems that lay ahead. Statistics of sexual-related offenses is expected to rise, and this is expected to stem from the growing number of people flocking into the city in search for urban conveniences. The city is Papua New Guinea's industrial hub. It produces over 60 million for government coffers, but with the economic boom comes social problems hidden within the fabrics of society. Sexual penetration of a minor now and come inside. So um, it's just, that's that now, or rape. I mean. Lay Sexual Offenses Squad reported close to 20 children are raped every month. This is a reported case, but it got some blood too where. Only reporting long all community level, all reporting na only at all stream lo hab na. We don't have records here. We normally deal with underage victims, 16, 15 na go down. Their sexual penetration of a minor. Okay, um, like in 2002, this case was our sexual cases. They were amended. So like previously, before 2002, me plus I, in sexual penetration of a minor, me plus use some unlawful canon knowledge, but that has been replaced, and sexual penetration of a minor now I'm come inside. So um, it's just, that's that now, or rape, I mean, before it's like, it just when when I stop inside, in the limit of like pennies, no vagina abnormalia, but now it's any object that goes into any parts of the body that's penetration. To the slightest degree, it's penetration. So in all cases that we play deal one, then incest is rape inside the family. First Constable Michelle Simbong says rape of children between the age of one year, six months, and 15 years old has risen this year. Sexual assault and similar or sexual touching, all these like kind of cases. That's that, that we normally deal with day-to-day, -day, daily cases, but mainly it's like rape and sexual penetration of a minor, where mainly all cases that we've like seen all sizes, age ranges from six years, five years, now you go on top. Mm -hmm. The lowest was one year, six months, and all these little babies. That, 
they were victims of this sexual penetration or this assault or this like that. So all perpetrators blow me blah too, you know, all big man that's all they were teenagers like 13, 12, 13, 14, 9 and 10 years and more perpetrators that me practicing inside. Yeah. For this time now, Lord January, you may got this year alone you may got fourteen black cases. Uh, it's over ten. Senior Constable Kulis Jamaica has been attached with the unit for 19 years and she has noted an increase in the rape of children in Lay. A uh, long time now, Ms. Tabs, so we can look at the or them. Uh, all sexual cases, they are only on the rise threat. The unit operates with a staff of five investigators, including several trainees. They get five new cases per day. This adds to the number of cases in court and those still under investigation. The prosecution of offenders takes a very long time. Look, look, come back in. It's not our fault. Huh? Population increasing now with the manpower shortage now. When we are dealing with these old cases, new ones are coming in. So, I'm hard, Lomi Platoya. Most of the rapes reported come from the settlements surrounding Lay City. The victims often need extensive counseling from experts that are lacking. Police have tried to help by sending victims to get counseling from non-government organizations. Lay's rape statistics sounds a warning to other provinces that are facing an economic boom, including Medang province. Regulations all can be any man, or stop him just like I know Pixar or stuff. So now any small kid inside the settlement, I can only phone one them all a Pixar no good, or all talk no good, or kind kind all of Pixar no good, just stop the phone. Uh, one plus good play example, one plus little mangi and come to the office, but me plan of been charging him. Okay. I've been little too much low, but charging him. He was holding on to a mobile phone and looking pics and no good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make him one of something and been looking on mobile phone. Medang provincial authorities are now facing a similar trend because of the influx of people into the province. The Medang police have opened a new family and sexual violence office two weeks ago to deal with its backlog of rape cases. But uh, on record now, uh, we have uh, 13 complaints. The problems of family and sexual violence are two separate sections. In Lay, the two sections work at separate offices, while Medang's newly established unit has been combined. We are working together, so we partner with family and sexual violence unit, but Office blah blah blah. We deal with them when there is a sexual matter or any sexual offense that arises within the family. Or say now me blah got new blah amended act. Yeah, he got marital rape now and stuff. So inside the married now he got rape. If me mama talk no god na, say papa him like sleep one time regardless suppose one time it's an offense. Then <laughs> That's when Papa Ibelat lo disla em sa pait mol meri karangi straight give him mark. Late police senior constable Josephine Sipua works in this small office. She deals with extramarital affairs and domestic violence. But if it's rape, the case gets referred to the sexual offense unit attached to the criminal investigation division. All cases and we plus are looking mosem ka mosem 300 you go roughly go sem lo 400 na me lo disla lo one plus month we plus Over the years, communication used to be one of the difficulties faced by Papua New Guineans. Rural communities rely on traditional means to pass on message, but that is now a thing of the past. With new technologies and innovations, communicating has become so efficient. In this report, Edwin Fidelis takes a look at the Center for Social 
and creative media in Groka that aims at developing an avenue where information can be passed through films and videos. Gina Baidam is from Severi Mabu village in the Southern Fly electorate of the Western province. When she realized that mothers and babies in a village are dying during every childbirth because of poor health facilities, she put her end up to talk on their behalfs. And until today, she never stopped raising concerns on the plights faced by women in a village every day. Women who are sitting in, a, in the skills like, like me uh, should rise up. Several thousands of kilometers away from the western province, in Manus, Miriam Potopi has a similar story. Last month, Gina and Miriam, together with four other women, gathered at the University of Goroka in the Eastern Highlands province to launch the film that featured their stories. All of us that are educated have a duty of care. I didn't want my woman to die. From like Gina and Miriam, there are many others that have similar stories that remained untold. Lives depend upon it. If I can do it, you can do it. It's an initiative of the Center for Social and Creative Media with support from international organizations aimed at producing films that feature stories of ordinary Papua New Guineans. Palmary Project is very much about promoting positive stories of Papua New Guinean women that have uh, you know, achieved great things and that other women can learn from. So we're really targeting a wide audience, not just women or young girls, but also men. Uh, to, to see how we can appreciate women in PNG society. The center, located at the University of Goroka, began in 2012 with the aim of doing awareness and educating others to realize their potentials in life. 1997, we've been putting name me, we like racist long magistrate, long tongue of Now, me racist one time, I'm looking at the future of my young girls. I'm looking at the future of my young uh, families that are rising. And the view that I have is uh, um, um, they can come like me. Uh, they, can, they can become like me. Uh. The film called Power Mary unpacks the life of these six women. So what we are trying to do at the CSCM is really create a lot of material about Papua New Guinea, stories from Papua New Guinea that matter uh, and that are around social issues in the community that then people can watch and identify with and that they can learn from. So there are new distribution angles that we need to explore as filmmakers as well to uh, make this industry a bit more sustainable. During its launch the last month at the University of Goroka, it received a standing ovation. It's a film that centers around passion, enthusiasm, and overcoming difficulties. And their stories are a representation of over six million ordinary Papua New Guinean men and women. Because I was privileged enough to be educated at the level that I am, I want to share that and give back and help other young women and girls come through. The film stars Susiel Nelson, Potmosby, Gina Baidam, Daru, Sister Lorraine Garasu, Buka, Miriam Potopi, Manus, Jennifer Baing Waiko, Morobe, and Rita Kare, Goroka. So all the power mares come from a wide range of um, different backgrounds and different regions because we wanted to cover uh, a wide range in Papua New Guinea, telling different stories, urban, rural, uh, uh, people who've received a lot of education, others who might not have had the opportunity to education. The Center for Social and Creative Media is centered around positive conceptions that encourages Papua New Guineans to realize their full potentials in their societies. The work that CSCM does is really we want to train filmmakers, media producers, people who can tell stories.
stories around social issues in Papua New Guinea. So when we uh, developed the project, um, we uh, came up with the idea that we could mentor and train filmmakers, up and coming filmmakers through the project. Local film productions like Power Mary is expected to have huge demand. Academics believe it is a way to educate and expose PNG's untold stories. With the high illiteracy rate in Papua New Guinea, audio and visual materials have become a significant part of communicating. More people tend to watch and listen to news than to read news or any other entertainment programs. Academics believe the illiteracy rate of PNG won't change in the next 5 to 10 years. And in terms of communication, videos and films will play a pivotal role as the main carrier of information. Over the past 70 years, the production of local films has drawn little attention. The National Film Institute, the only institute that trained filmmakers, came to a halt as it plunged into administrative and financial problems. After, you know, after independence and then filmmaking just went down. Because in the 80s we had Tukana, we had Tim Fish Run, Tim Fish Run we had uh, Marabe, all these feature films, and they were produced by Papua New Guineans. And then, that was in the 80s, between 80s, end of the 80s to the 90s. Where did it go? There was nothing, 2000, nothing. Nothing was produced, and where did all these filmmakers go? The University of Goroka, through the Center for Social and Creative Media, had realized the potential of filming, and is now looking at filling in the void. Because as we know now, media is fairly influential. Uh, the print media, television media, uh, the internet, all the various platforms that are now inundating our landscape, the airspace if you like. And unless Papua New Guineans are in it, we will only be receiving information. Uh, by that I mean we do need to articulate and provide ourselves platforms from which we can launch our own voices, launch our own stories, share our own ideas about what we see and what we, what we want to offer. Given the high illiteracy rate in Papua New Guinea, doing awareness through films is seen as a vital part of effective communication. Films are a great tool for awareness, for education and for entertainment and people tend to call it edutainment when we mix entertainment with education. And with the Community Talk Pixel series we've produced earlier on on HIV, we've really found that um, when we tell stories from a community angle in collaboration with communities, they can have a really great impact in terms of educating people around certain issues. So uh, given uh, the illiteracy rate in Papua New Guinea, films are really a great tool to raise awareness. They can really reach uh, communities, um, but also tell characters stories so they touch you people on an emotional level and that makes them more acceptable and receptible of messages. Those who are being left out of the formal education system may not be so lucky. They comprise almost half of Papua New Guinea's total population, where reading and writing remained a major challenge. There is still, I think, room for more in terms of drama, in terms of documentary, uh, that uh, would need to be made for, by Papua New Guineans or anyone else, but especially from this country where the stories need to find their place in our platforms, particularly in our electronic media and television in particular. All over Papua New Guinea, there are stories that remained untold, stories about successes and struggles. My advice to the women of our Western province other provinces throughout the nation is uh, women who are sitting in, uh, in the skills like, like me uh, should rise up, have more power to bring development into our community. That's why we have to name the magistrate, we must stand up now, walk with me.
as Papua New Guinea continues to develop with a promising multi-million Kina economy, many people are expected to plunge into the darker side of this economic boom. Unemployment may become a major challenge as employment opportunities will become scarce. Papua New Guinea, give me one, give me one like agricultural society. Agriculture, not ground, and was a backbone for you, me. Now it is a time, if you are educating more Pikini, blame in a salary, all that they have, go inside Tasolo school education system and modernized system. That's all time over the Pikini, blame me, go inside this system now. All you lose thinking of ground blow all, all you lose touch on the ground blow all, no, you lose thinking of them or who's at line straight. But what the Center for Social and Creative Media aims is to make people realize their potentials, that their life can't go on as usual. And in order to participate meaningfully in the country's growing economy, they need to realize and unpack their own full potentials. And that's all for this episode. Thank you to all who have participated. And if you have any comments or stories you would like to share, please contact us via the address on your screen or visit us on our Facebook page. For now, enjoy the rest of your viewing on your number one station, MTV.